Zone-based firewalls are now a thing in the Unify ecosystem with the introduction of Network 9.0. So let's take a look at what the zone-based firewall is and how it works and let's see if we can break it down and give you an easy how to use it guide. So let's start first by looking at the migration process. So once you've upgraded to version 9, you are still going to be greeted with this kind of firewall. So you'll have your simple and advanced rules that you can have set up. But to upgrade, you simply click this button and it takes about maybe five to 10 seconds. Once you have your zone based firewalls, you're greeted with something like this. But before we jump into this, I'm going to have a look at Ubiquiti's article and I'll put this down in the description on the zone based firewall. So what are the requirements to use the zone based firewall? Well, you need a Unify cloud gateway or you need a Unify gateway without the cloud controller built in. Unify gateway or Unify cloud gateway version 4.1 or newer and you need the network application 9.0. What is a zone based firewall and why this is a probably a good change for you? Well, zone based firewalls are logical groupings of network interfaces, VLANs, WANs, VPNs and you can apply policies quite easily and simply to this zone. Previously, Ubiquiti's firewall setup was relatively simple in terms of how it worked, but if you remember, we had things like LAN in, LAN out, LAN local, WAN in, WAN out, WAN local, and this basically simplifies it down a little bit further. If you wanna know where your firewall rules have been migrated to, you can have a look at this link that I've popped down below, and you can see the rule set and where the source and the destination zone goes. Uh, you will have, it does say here, why do I have so many rules after very uh, after the migration? So it will create multiple rules in multiple zones, but you can go ahead and lock that down a little bit further and go through them once it's set up and running. You might be asking yourself, well, what are the advantages of the zone-based firewall? And you can see them right here. I'm not going to read them out for you, but it's simplified management. It's more granular and it's more enhanced network segmentation and it's better visibility that you can see when we look at the zone matrix you'll see it's quite easy to differentiate what's going on with what rules in what area. Uh, we have the built-in firewall zones so you have standard ones that come out of box so remember we used to have the LAN in, LAN out, LAN local that I mentioned earlier. We have external which is incoming traffic that is untrusted so more from the WAN side of things. We have your internal networks that can be for trusted traffic between your networks that's going on. We have the gateway and and this handles traffic directed to and from the Unify gateway. We have the VPN. So when we have users that VPN into the network, we can see the traffic going in and out. We have this hotspot that can be for your guests. So your guest networks that you tick and you get set up that you previously used to, that will sit inside the hotspot. And finally, the DMZ traffic. And finally, the demilitarized zone, which is the DMZ. For deployments that are required for public facing services, such as a web server or something like that, that you want to be able to access from a public side, but you don't want them to access anything inside your internal trusted resource. You can create new and additional zones, which you'll look at. So this is what the zone looks like on this page, but I think we've got enough here. I mean, you can look at this link later. It's down in the description about configuring policies, but we're gonna be going through that now. Let's take a look at what we have in my setup at this moment. Behind me is the new zone-based firewall. Now this little diagram at the top is really helpful as it helps you understand all the different zones that have been set up within your network. So if we look at the top, we have the VPN section where you have your public servers, where your public facing services will sit. You have the internet, which is classed as external. And then we have internal. So these will be your resources, your default networks and your identity users. You also have the hotspot zone, which will be your guest networks and your guests. And already further down below, it shows you what you have set up. So in my internal space, I have my management network, my main network, my guest network, my IoT network, my CCTV network and a kids network. For external, there's the primary WAN 1 and 2. There's nothing set up in the gateway. And then we have a VPN network. So the open VPN server, a site to site VPN that I have set up. And then finally, we have the hotspot, which will be the guest. The zone matrix itself is quite easy to read. In the first column, we have all the source and in the first row at the top, we have all the destination targets. For example, if you were having an internal to internal, you can view the policies, there's 16 policies at the moment, and you can scroll down and you can see all of these policies here. This looks fairly similar to how it was in the previous version. It's just a little bit easier to understand what's going through between those networks. So for example, if you had a VPN user that needed access to the internal network, I can go down here and I can see now my VPN to internal IPs are completely blocked, so I can't access anything else. However, my VPN to my NAS is automatically allowed. 
So I can then go off and view my NAS on the specific ports that are required at the moment, it's in any port. And then if you wanna look at the traffic back the other way, you would go the opposite way. We know the source is gonna be internal, but the destination is gonna be VPN. So if I go back this way, you might start seeing rules that you may be able to remove because they don't make sense currently with your setup. But do keep in mind these additional rules have been created to make sure nothing gets blocked when you upgrade your firewall. The main one we want to look at is the NAS and the VPN. So I know now from the internal network, we'll be able to go back the other way to the NAS itself. So both ways are allowing traffic. If you want to create yourself a new zone, it's really easy and simple. You simply just click create zone and we're gonna call this one zone one. Here's a network I created earlier called zone network test. So we go and save that, click add entry. And then if we have a look back here, simple as that, we have zone one here and zone one up here. Let's go now and create a new rule so I can connect from my internal network to zone based one that we've just created. Uh, we have my Wi-Fi which is connected. If I have a quick look here, we're 10, 10, 10, 192. And I have this desktop here, which is 192.168.2.223. If I jump back to my networks, you can see 192.168.2.0. So 2.223 is in this zone based network and 10.10.10.0 is in my internal network. Let's go back to security and then the firewalls. You can see we have the zone test one. If I bring this across just here, I'm currently pinging 192.168.2.223 and it doesn't work. So I'm gonna take that to the side one second. We're going from our internal network, so that's our source, and we're going to the target of zone test one. And if we have a look, we already have two policies set up here. We have isolate networks, which is from another rule, and we have block all traffic, which is an out of box rule. And then if we look the other way, so if we were going from zone test one to internal, everything is blocked. So we're not able to do anything. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go across to this one here in the top right hand corner, and we're gonna create a policy. So I'm going to allow ICMP. We go from internal, and I'm gonna choose a specific network. I'm gonna choose my internal network. And then we're not going to put any specific port on this. We're going to allow. And what we're going to do is we're going to auto allow the return traffic. So this is like your IoT network where you do your established and related traffic. You can automatically create the rule to allow the traffic to come back. When we go to destination, zone test one, which is the correct zone, we then have network and we only have a single network in here at the moment, but it's best to be as granular as you can and you have the flexibility to play around with the changes there. So you can select certain networks if you wanted to do so. One thing I generally tell people to do is if they are trying to do this for the first time or they're trying to understand how firewalls are working and how things are blocked, start with all your any any rules between the networks and then slowly become more restrictive. So first maybe lock down your network, then lock down the port, then lock down the protocol. So slowly, slowly you can do it as a iterative process. We're not matching opposite, we're keeping the port. Uh, we're gonna choose IPv4 and we're gonna choose custom and we're gonna go for ICMP and then we'll select any ICMP type name. We're not matching opposite. We're gonna leave the connection state to all. If you have a syslog server and you want to log it on the syslog server, you can do that. And then we have the schedule. Now schedule can allow you to set this up for always. If you wanna use it daily or weekly or one time or even custom, you can choose that option. So for example, if you have a change window that you need to do some changes in, that you need to open up a specific port for that time, you can go and set this up as a one time. It will automatically disable the rule. If you want, you can add a description. Okay, we click add policy. And then you can see that's automatically brought the rule there. And I'm just gonna bring this across I'm just gonna give it a couple of seconds to allow the firewall to update. And hopefully while I'm talking, you can see right there, I have a response. And it's really that simple to create the rule. And I'm just gonna show you what's happened in the background there. So we created the allow ICMP from the source internal network to the destination. And then if I look at zone test one, it no longer says block all and it's created some policies. So it's allow ICMP return. So it's automatically created that return rule for you so you don't need to worry about creating it and it's given it everything that it would so icmp protocol from the source network to the destination network and the last thing i'm going to show you is what you can see at the top of your screen now so this is the trigger that happened when the firewall rules are being dropped so it was currently being dropped by the inter vlan 01 when we were going from zone test one to our internal network we can see what rule was stopping the traffic from dropping and you can look at the firewall policy the inter vlan drop 
and that's what was dropping. That is a overview of the new zone based firewall setup in the Unify network. Now I'm going to be releasing a video in the coming months, which will be my Unify network setup in 2025, where I will go through this in a little bit more detail. So if there's something specific you want to see, let me know down in the comments below and I will be sure to include it in that video. For now, this is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.